This is Renata Ray from A Dash Spire Entertainment Magazine, where celebrity, art, and entertainment meet. Sit back with us today as we interview our special guest, Dr. Rebecca Dupaz. Good afternoon. We are back from commercial. My name is Renata Ray, and we are so glad for April National Poetry Month to have Dr. Rebecca Dupaz with us. She is a celebrated poetress, a doctor. She is a children's author as well as has two CDs and has written other books. And her resume goes on and on and on. And we are so glad to have her apart to sit down and chat with us here today at A Dash Fire Magazine. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm um, well. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to talk with you today. I am so glad to have you here. I have definitely been a follower, not a stalker, but a follower. Uh, you have done some amazing work. Uh, I love your poetry, uh, the book that you have. Out. So we're just going to take some time to talk about that. I know myself, I literally have been writing poetry since I was eight years old. And I started with Langston Hughes and then Maya Angelou. And then I also had a chance to meet Nikki Giovanni when I was 10 years old. And I remember I was like, oh, well, she's a poet like me. So I have to laugh about that now. But what, what has your poetry journey been like? Yeah, I was inspired by my mother and my sister. I remember being very small, maybe around the age of five or so, give or take. And my mom had a poem, um, Life is Like a Mountain. And I remember my sister, too, had a poem um, about being a, a young Black girl. I don't remember the title, but I remember knowing that they had written those two pieces. And um, that was when I was really, really young. And so when I think about my journey, my inspiration first came from my mom and my sister. I knew that they had expressed themselves um, in a way that was like visual and it rhymed and it, you know, it sounded good to me. I remember having that in mind when I wrote my first poem uh, in middle school. But when I did discover that this was a thing, that there were people who were famous because they had written poems. When my teacher started teaching me poetry, it was an amazing thing. But my journey was really organic. I, I remember friends in high school knowing that I wrote, saying we should do a talent show and people expressing themselves, you know, differently. Or maybe, no, 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 it was a poetry show. Everyone was doing poetry in this show um, and, and just sort of blossoming on stage, being able to take my written thought and put it to action, uh, it was absolutely um, amazing to me. And so most of my um, inspiration came from the people around me, family and friends. That's awesome uh, to have that. And it just seemed kind of natural and organic that this is what people do, people write. And um, to get on stage, I know that your poetry, some of it is in a political fashion. So how how did that come about and and did you re expect some of the reaction or the accolades or the following that you have get gotten from your pieces yeah it's interesting that you say political fashion but i know where that comes from i'm very much a narrative writer i've always written about what i was feeling what i was seeing what i was thinking and so i think it's like this natural transition from me writing about my life, me writing about what it felt like 
growing up without my dad or what it felt like to lo- to lose a friend or it's for, for me to go through a breakup or discover new love. As I'm getting older, that transpires to me writing about the things that I'm seeing happening in the world. And so my pieces that may feel political um, are really, uh, in my perspective, like based on race relations, based on the ways that humans treat one another about this journey as a black woman, um, fighting to be seen, fighting for equity for myself, for those around me. And so um, it's just me telling the story. It's it's almost like this biographical <laughs> trail of poems, uh, because most of the time the subject in my poem, you know, is me, not necessarily in this selfish way, but um, in a way that I can be an expert in my life. <laughs> and so, you know, wanting to write from that space and being comfortable writing from that space, from telling, you know, my truth and being able to stand strongly in it, back it up, turn poems into conversation, um, but also make sense of my world. And so when it comes to like the murder of Freddie Gray, when it comes to um, being Black in corporate America, these are things that I've experienced and they're things that I'm comfortable uh, writing about. Well, that's definitely one of my favorite poems. <laughs> I'm not in corporate anymore, but uh, I definitely can relate to that, uh, especially when you know that you have a light in you and you have to deal with uh, so many people trying to dim that light that you have in you. And so you took your education uh, to the next level. Yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite pieces. And, and I dealt with corporate, but now you are Dr. DuPaz. And how did that co- come along? Um, what was that? Uh, what did you made you decide to take your education to the next level? Because I know I was in my master's program and I was like, I am, I'm tired of school. So to go to that next level, uh, definitely share about that. Yeah, I, you know, I have two friends who um, got their doctorate years before I did, and I remember their journey. I remember being very proud of them, you know, for finishing that journey. That's always been in the back of my mind. And, um, you know, for me, it's not that I needed it for my career's sake. Like, I didn't get the doctorate in order to um, secure some type of um, specific move in my career path. I think that I sought it because I couldn't figure out why not. You know what I mean? Like if I asked the question, why not? There was not an answer good enough that would keep me from it. Um, People have been calling me Miss DuPas since I was a little girl. People were calling me Dr. DuPas since I got my master's. And I think that in many ways, I have people around me that manifest greatness in me, um, that give me this vision. And so... It was a lingering thought in my mind, why not? I would, I would love to be able to experience the journey of receiving a doctorate and also to secure that level of education where when it comes to education, because that's the field that I've studied, that um, I have something to say. Uh, and I always have something to say, so let me clarify that. I have the credentials behind the things that I'm saying. Um, because I've always been opinionated about the classroom. I knew I wanted to teach since I was a little girl. And I've always had opinions and ideas about how to improve learning environments, but especially around the topic of race. And so um, after my master's, I was like, why not? I might as well go the rest of the way. And so I made the decision. I got on the internet, ended up having a phone call, You know, went through all of the admission stuff. And I started the journey and it felt natural because I really am a lifelong learner. I love talking to people. I love getting perspective. Um, I love writing, you know. I don't necessarily love reading, but (laughs) that part of it didn't, um, you know, sway me or dissuade me either. Um, So I just went for it. I just went for it. And um, I'm really grateful because it has tied all my passions together. Um, Talking about race education, um, you know, it is like the perfect little bow for uh, the different, not only the careers, but the different things that have interested me along the way. 
Well, that's awesome how you were able to have the discipline to do that and still have that creative side as well. So one thing we didn't talk about, but um, I noticed the ring. So let, let's talk about that. <laughs> I, yeah, I have to, I, I have to wear um, my jewelry as, as often as possible, really to remind me. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, my dissertation was somewhat stifling to my creativity. And actually the ring was birthed out of what I felt like a drought. When I was working on my dissertation, I felt guilty when I was thinking about things about that dissertation because it's it's a it's a it's something that takes up so much of your mental space and because you have a certain amount of time to finish it. I didn't want to start and look up and it be seven years later, at least for the school that I went to, and then I have to petition to keep going. And I also didn't want to keep spending money, you know. So it's like, okay, if you have any type of time, Rebecca. You need to be reading, you need to be writing, you need to be building this dissertation. So I wasn't really into poetry the way that I would normally be. And then when I finished, you know, the first thing I did is I made jewelry. So I'm wearing one of my handcrafted rings. And typically what I do is I repurpose jewelry. So this beautiful flower used to be a brooch and now it's a middle finger ring. My, um, my jewelry line is called Middle Finger by Beth make a statement without making a statement middle finger because the rings are large and typically made for the middle finger. You know, I wanted something bold. And often when I go to the stores, I see a lot of adorable rings, a lot of cute rings, a lot of rings that say that they're statement pieces, but they're not necessarily as big and as, um, as bold as, as the ones that I make. So I had no idea people would gravitate towards it. But after I made one, I made a few more and then I was like, I'm gonna try to sell these. And so it's been a little bit over a year and people have been absolutely amazing. So Middle Finger by Bex does handcrafted rings, but also resell jewelry. I love to thrift. Uh, one man's trash is certainly another man's treasure. That's another poem that I've written too, but I find these pieces that are unique and I resell them uh, through my Etsy shop. So that's just another creative avenue for me. And I did that before I really got this, my juices flowing to start writing again. So the process is really interesting. Once you focus on the strenuous academic journey of getting a doctorate, I had to ease my way back, or I should say fight my way back <laughs> into the creative space that I know and love. I can, I, I overstand that because now um, that we do the magazines and we have the streaming channels and I'm, I'm surrounded with creative, but my own creativity is, is sometimes stifled in, in that situation uh, for sure. Uh, but I said I wanted to make sure that we did something for Poetry Month because that's my heart. That's my passion. And um, so many people is unleashing that creative that really helps in so many other parts of the of the world and and with different people's journeys because sometimes there could be a stigma okay oh you're a poet yeah i'm a poet yeah i'm a doctor i'm a physicist i'm a nurse so that creativity it helps you in a way to solve problems and to see and, and to have a vision and because i deal with so many poets and i know so many poets i'm i'm gonna always stand uh in that and advocate uh, for that and it one of the natural progressions it seems to be for poetry is authorship. So we're going to take another little break and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about your book. Okay. We'll be right back. Hey, we are back from commercial break 
And we have, we're here with Dr. Rebecca Dupaz, and she is a poet, um, she is a doctor, and she is an author as well. And we're going to talk about her latest project. It kind of mixes what she does uh, in her nine to five with uh, one of her passions. So let's, let's talk about your book. So um, I recently released a children's book. I didn't see that thing coming. <laughs> Almost like I didn't see the jewelry coming, but um, it, it's not that I never envisioned writing a story. I, I people watch all the time and I would tell myself one day I'm gonna write a children's book. I'm gonna write a book that kind of addresses some of these adult concerns I have as someone who works in the museum field, people watching and also always thinking about uh, diversity and equity and whatnot. And interestingly enough, I was binge watching a show one evening and I sat down and I, I wrote the book. The name came to me, the, you know, the plot comes to me, the, this, the, the main narrative and what I call this um, underlying narrative, it all comes to me. And in about 30 minutes, I have the draft of a children's book entitled Mario Goes to the Museum. And I fell in love with the, with the draft of it. Um, but basically it's about a little black boy that goes to the museum with his father and he learns about um, his African history, but he also finds a, a place of belonging. And uh, what I was trying to do with that is tackle some of the things that I think about um, some of the things that I researched about in terms of um, how black and brown children sort of, I guess, are impacted by the adults around them. My dissertation specifically is around uh, diversity training and how that contributes to how teachers are prepared for diverse learners. But I didn't want to write a book about my dissertation. So it was more so about how the museum space is welcoming um, to black and brown children. Um, and that's sort of like under the surface. Uh, what the book ends up being is a field trip story. But because I'm an educator, I threw some questions in the back so that um, if you look at, at a picture of a security guard, um, you know, kind of peering at um, the little boy Mario for touching a mask, you can really get into what that means. What's the role of security guard? Why was Mario uncomfortable? Um, uh, when does Mario feel um, most comfortable in the museum? When does he not? Um, and so, you know, it's like some Jedi type, uh, read this story, but I really want you to think about these things happening with, uh, with it. And um, the support around the book was awesome, you know, and, um, it's still moving, you know, it's available on my website and also on Amazon. And what I love about this book is that I'm inspired to keep going. I'm already thinking about what Mario is going to do. Uh, the only thing I didn't do, Renata, is put some poetry in this book. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm going to um, think about the way in which my world intersects and how I can keep this, this conversation going about around this beautiful little black boy who's, uh, you know, going to go everywhere he can possibly go, everywhere my imagination will take him, I should say. Well, that's awesome. So Mario reads the hieroglyphics off the wall <laughs> and starts writing poems. <laughs> That's that's awesome. Uh, that that's great that you infuse that knowledge in there, and and I love how you kind of talk about some of the issues of the day because they're very real. You know the things that are happening and and keep happening, and and, and that's the thing we we want to cut to a point where we're not sick and tired of being sick and tired. Um, and every generation uh, definitely must declare its right to be free. That's one of my favorite quotes. It's attributed to a couple of different people, but I think that even the generation coming up, even though as far as we've come, um, we're reminded every day how much further that we have to come. 
And so I have enjoyed having you here and we're going to have a, a wrap up question. The time just flew by. I'm like, how did that even happen? It's like we just sat down and, and now it's like almost at the end. But is there anything that you wanted to share, any message that you wanted to get out there on, on any topic? Um, the floor is yours. You said any topic, Lord. Okay, so I think that what I would encourage um, those of you who are writers or those of you who um, have had an inkling to write, just get it on the paper. Um, the, um, the best lesson that I learned is that writer's, writer's block is a figment of our imagination. It's what we tell ourselves when we think we are not good enough, but it's not a real thing. And so whether you are a poet or an aspiring author, if you have an idea, put it down, you can make it perfect later. Don't psych yourself out because you have a story and you have a message that someone else needs. You probably need it the most, but somebody else needs it. The second thing that I'll say is just to take care of yourself. Um, a lot of my poetry, even my children's book, the underlying message is really about equity and belonging. It's about self-love. Um, and ultimately it's about self-care. The world is doing what the world does, and that can be very daunting to all of us. Let poetry be a vehicle for you. Let it be healing for you. Let it be clarity for you, if that's your thing. But regardless of what your thing is, just remember to, um, to take care of yourself because somebody needs you. Absolutely, and amen to both of those things. The, the worst poem that is, is the poem that's never, ever written. And so uh, we all have a voice and to use it in whatever it is. And so I, I thank you for taking the time to, to sit down with us. I know you're a very busy person and uh, you have your little son now, <laughs> your, your dog. Uh, and, and I'm glad that Pup finally got a name. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> so. I was. I took my time with it. I was like, I'm having to call you this for the rest of your life, and so I, I had to find a name that I love. <laughs> Well, for those who don't know, you have to follow her and you have to follow a little pup that now has a name Chase, I believe is yes. his name. I can't believe I remembered that. I <laughs> okay. remember that though. You've really been on the journey with me. <laughs> yes, I, he's so cute. I mean, I love other little dogs and puppies are like little babies. They're all adorable when they're, they're someone else's. <laughs> they, this is work. Okay. they can go so, home. This, this is so. Shout out to him for being quiet. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. So we're looking out for uh, the the further adventures of uh, adventures, rather Mario in the museum. And do you have any other projects that you're working on that you want to come on? Give give us a sneak preview. Let us let us hear. Let us get the four one one. Well, I'm itching. This is only an idea, but I'm itching to do um, another um, poetry show. I'm you know, the pandemic is a monster in and of itself. Um, the one thing that I appreciate about, about this is the ability to kind of just think and plan, you know, especially for those of us who are home, that's not everybody's story. In my thinking and planning though, I'm ready to kind of dig into this virtual space. And so I want to try and put together some type of poetry experience. Um, I would say in, in, in the next few months. Um, okay. And what I'm working on now is you know, even if it's just a little Zoom, you know, invite ticket type Zoom thing, I would like to share my work with some folk and, and, and engage in ways that I really haven't. And the other thing that is more um, present is that I'm working on a novel. I've been writing this novel for a number of years. I finished the draft of it in 2020. Um, and I started pitching it and I was told that I need, you know, a few more thousand words in it. <laughs> <laughs> and so at this point, I'm, I feel like I'm perfecting this thing. I'm falling in love with this story all over again. I was working on it late last night. I'm going to continue to work on it. But hopefully, um, I'll be dropping my novel in the next year or so, if the Lord sees fit. So that'll be exciting. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, we will. And you have a, you know, a lot of amazing things going on. And so uh, if you guys are not connected, believe me, when we post this, we will post all of your links and where people can reach out and connect with you and get some fly jewelry. This is the second time today I said fly. I, I'm, I'm being transported back to the 70s today for some reason, but... Um, but uh, definitely and check out the book and, and we definitely want to offer you a space in our bookstore we have over 200 authors on Dreamspire books so we will be more than happy to offer you a space to be in our children's books section on there so definitely people can also be able to connect with you there as well so Thank you, and I'm going to wrap up the show, but thank you for, for stopping by and hanging out with us and having a conversation, and we, you guys, you got to keep up with her, and we'll have all that information for you. So we have had the honor to talk with uh, Dr. Rebecca Dupas, and hear all the things that she's done and we even got a, a little bit of tea about what's coming on as far as the novel and the poetry show and everything so thank you for joining us here on a dash fire magazine where we are celebrity and entertainment and art all mixed together thank you so much <laughs>